I'm continuing with the synth from the previous example and I'll show you a couple of things that should help you jump in and start making your own structures. And what I've done is I've changed the skin to something with a slider that you could make in Microsoft Paint, this blocky stuff, shortened the names of the envelope parameters, I've moved the amp envelope down the bottom and just named it ADSR, put an F in front of the ADSR for the filter envelope so that you can tell those apart inside your host when you're getting those parameters for automation. Let's delete these two combo boxes that we're using to select the waveforms. And I'm going to insert a conversion module, a voltage to list type, which converts the blue audio cables into green list entry cables. I've added these two knobs that can be used to select the waveforms instead of the combo boxes. Let's hear that. So those work, and the next thing I'm going to do is insert a flow control module. There are two types of flow controls, a one-to-many and a many-to-one. going to use a many-to-one. Um, of course, as you guess, these basically reroute signals, and for instance, a one-to-many would be used to assign an LFO to a destination. And I'm going to take this many-to-one, connect it five times to the pitch of the midi to CV, and then connect the output to the pitch of both oscillators and use this to select the octave. Copy one of these knobs with the voltage to list so that we have a knob to select the position of this many to one flow control. And we're going to name this octave. And we're going to add a control type that doesn't show up on the GUI. It is a fixed values control and as you can guess, this gives you a bunch of fixed numerical values because SynthEdit is, it has a couple of different ways that you can select pitch. This module is set to one volt per octave. So my figures are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, and that should give me five different octaves to select from. Lovely, okay. Now you could also use this uh, many-to-one structure to, for instance, limit the uh, waveforms that you can select for the synth. So I've copied this many-to-one structure here and routed it to the voltage to list that was selecting the first waveform. And the knob to select the first waveform is now with another voltage to list module that is selecting which of the entries from this many to one. And we can use the fixed values here to put in the values for the waveform. If you look at the um, properties for this oscillator, you'll see we have seven different waveforms. The bottom one is always going to be zero volts and the top one is 10 volts. And if you work that out on paper, you'll realize that basically the um, way to figure that out really quickly is to take the number of choices, subtract one, and that's going to be your interval. So uh, for instance, with seven choices, you're going to have zero as the first one, 10 as the last one, 10 divided by six is um, going to be 1.666. So you've got zero, 1.6, uh, 3.3, 5, 6.6, 8.3, and 10. Those seven different voltages will select the seven different waveforms. And incidentally, immediately in between those voltages are going to be the crossover points where those would be selected. That's of course if you wanted to limit the waveforms that you could select with that. For instance, if you were doing an LFO and you didn't want the white noise waveform to be in there or something like that. Okay, I've made my workspace bigger and I've added some structure down here for an LFO. I've got my oscillator, I've got it connected to a level adjuster, and a knob to amplify the modulation of the LFO. And here's my pitch or rate knob for the LFO. And when you connect a knob to a pitch pin of an oscillator, it gives you zero to 10. Of course, uh, this is a low frequency oscillator, so we need to drastically reduce those numbers. I'm going to make my range negative 12 volts to two volts. And of course, two is in a very low audio range. Negative 12 volts is something like 45 seconds for an audio duty cycle. So that creates a very slow LFO, which is always nice to give yourself a little extra range for those. 
And then I've got this one-to-many module, which is the other type of flow control. I'm going to connect that to the pitch destinations. And I'm going to connect it to my filter pitch and my filter resonance just for fun. And if we go to the properties of this module, you can type the names of the destinations as they would appear in some types of selectors. And let's see, reduce my window so that everything doesn't go super big. And I'm going to add a control like the combo box, a list entry, except when I connect it, I am going to use a different type of form for it. You could use a button stack. And if you look on the GUI, here are the different buttons to select the destinations. A selector is just one button that pages through the destinations. I'm going to use an up, down, select. And here's my LFO amplifier and my LFO rate. And if we listen to that, there's LFO to pitch, LFO to, and to filter. If we go back to pitch, you'll hear that the range is rather extreme. If we wanted something like a vibrato effect, it would be very difficult to set the exact level with this tiny little range right here. So what I'm going to do is put an exponential slope on that modulation. And as you will read, Synthetit uses 10 for unity. Um, whereas normally, of course, one is unity in math, which means that in Synthetit, if you use a level adjuster module to level adjust 10 by 10, you get 10. If you level adjust zero by zero, you get zero. If you level adjust five by five, you get half of five, which is 2.5. So if 2.5 is halfway between zero and 10, you've created a curve that is really more appropriate for selecting um, or for fine tuning the LFO pitch amount. And here we go. That's a little better for vibrato. If we connect this slider directly to that, you can hear that it has a more dramatic effect. So you can see that it really does improve the range if you do that. And if it's hard to see, this is just another level adjuster in between it, and I've just connected the slider to both pins of the level adjuster, which means that it's level adjusting itself, creating an exponential response. And for instance, if you had a linear envelope and connected the envelope, if it presumably went from 10 to zero, um, through that you would get an exponential curve out of your linear envelope. 